So welcome everybody once again. Today we are going to touch on very, very important uh, element in the field of spirituality, which totally relates to the the sincere pursuit of mighty. I mean, if you don't know about this divine door, then uh, you know our pursuit will lead to you know disappointment. So we must need to have very clear understanding about what this divine door is, what is it that is closing it, where is it located, how does it open? So the secret door to the divine. So why do I need to know about this secret door? It relates to the prime purpose of human birth. The human birth is a boon, is a blessing for, for the soul which is suffering the everlasting cycle of life and death. Never ending cycle of never ending cycle of life and death is what the soul is suffering for time immemorial. And with great fortune, the soul has got this human birth where they have opportunity to break free from the clutch of these bondages. And it is this very secret door that makes the human being special compared to any other species. So if we have taken birth in the human life and we have no knowledge about that divine door, then our life will be equivalent to the life of any other species. You know, in Tulsi Ramayan, it says, Bade bhagya manush tanapava, sur dur lav sad granthahi gava. With the greatest fortune, we have got the human birth, the human body. This body is even something that the deities want to come into. It is even not available easily even to the deities because deities eh, are one of those 84 lakhs of yonis, 84 lakhs of incarnations, the life species, but human beings are special among them. Human, human being, the human race is apart from those bhog yonis because human birth is the greatest boon. And so even the deities aspire to take the human birth. Surduralab. This is even rare to those deities, the sura, the deities. They aspire to take birth in human life. Why? The next line says, Sadhan dham mokshakar dwara pahin je par lok because only in the human body, we have the door to the divine. We have the door for the liberation. And we are here to talk about the same very secret door. So it relates to the prime purpose of the human birth, which is to end the cycle of life and death and attain the everlasting peace and happiness. But what is the problem? The problem is this door is hidden. You know, we, we know about the nine doors, which are very obvious in nature. But where is that secret door, which is called Haridwar? Think about it. The name of that door itself is Haridwar the door to the Almighty, but, but it is closed. 
and it is secret. Our senses cannot experience it. The door is hidden and closed. And that too, closed by what? Closed by Kundalini, which is like, it is like Bajra, like, you know, that's very strong at the, you know, it's something like hinge, the very strong hinge, which is keeping the door closed. It is closed by Kundalini. And that's why our Guru says, in uh, one of the bhajan, says, Bajra pol ughari dekho, makar tar samoy. Says that, uh, Bajra pol ughari dekho, meaning the door which is like Bajra, very strong, very rigid, which, you know, the normal force cannot touch, cannot open it. It is closed like that. Think about it. How badly we are caged in the cycle of life and death. That there is only one escape from this chain cycle of suffering. Only one escape door. And that too very rigidly closed by Kundalini. We are caged in the cycle of life and death. The only way out is that secret door to the divine, which is hidden, which is closed. And the power that is required for pa passing through, for opening that door, is not within these five human senses, not within these five organs of actions, not within the four inner organs. All the means, the prakritic means that we have been utilizing in our day-to-day -day activities, in our day-to-day -day worship. Everything is very prakritic in nature and are insufficient to let you cross beyond that door. Maybe it will help you touch that door, but not cross it. So the power that is required for passing through that door is not within the human limits, not within the human senses. And that is the biggest hurdle. And the sooner we realize this, it is only then we'll understand the gravity of the opportunity that we have got today by getting the shelter of Sadhguru. And that's why we say that it's a boon. It's a blessing that Sadhguru is present in human form with the power that can open this secret door. So what is this secret door? We know the nine doors which are obvious in nature which we utilize for our worldly life. We have two eyes, we have two nostrils, we have two ears, mouth, and two organs of excretion. With these nine doors, we have been running this human life day in, day out. Being ignorant about another secret door which is again within the human body only not anywhere else only the human body holds this door the secret dasham dwar the tenth door so what is the secret tenth door our guru says that from the region of the heart even the ancient scripture says this from the region of the heart. There are 100 nadis, 100 nerves that go, that go downward. And there is only one nadi that go upward to the top of the head. And that nadi is called Sushmana nadi. In fact, the spirit within the body 
is within this sushmana nadi only in the region of the heart the the soul resides within this sushmana nadi and the other end of the sushmana nadi which is on the top of the head the orifice of this the opening of of this nadi is what is called the secret tenth door the dasham dwar but this is closed and closed heavily rigidly with the hood of the sush hood of the kundalini kundalini which is the serpentine entity which is keeping its hood at that orifice of the sushmana nari and keeping it closed and so there is no conscious light within which is all around but not within it is closed and there is a darkness inside the soul is not able to experience that light within because the door is closed and even though even though one get the theoretical understanding about the secret door even though one puts lot of breathing effort the kumbha kriya the bandha and kumbha and breathing to raise the breath and use the breathing force to open the secret door at most they can get the glimpse of the opening only for the duration for which it can hold the kumbhak but it cannot yet have the glimpse of the consciousness which is waiting to enter inside the body so it is absolutely absolutely beyond the, the capability of a human being to open the secret door and cross and attain the vision of consciousness on their own the divya drishti that we have heard in uh, you know several epic stories in television the divya drishti the divine eyes you know when you open that divine eyes then you can see the divine you know those are very symbolic when we represent that with the the eyes you know this is my divine eyes in reality it symbolizes nothing but this secret tenth door which is closed only when this secret tenth door opens part band he gagan ka bahar rok prakash andhkar antar rahe moh karm jag paas if this door remains closed then the soul remains caught into the darkness of maya because all it can see and experience is the subject of maya it cannot experience the wisdom the light of consciousness it cannot experience the self it will remain self ignorant as long as this door is closed khule adhar ki var jab ant mite andhyar antar drishya viloki rachna aparampa and only when this divine door opens then the divine structure of the body is all visible in the experience of the spirit then we see the brahma energy you know illuminating brightening our entire structure of the divine structure which is very inside all the chakra blossoming up the kundalini paving the way for the consciousness to flow freely in sushmana called the sushmana pravah the sushmana pravah is a feet a yogic feet which opens the dimension of consciousness to the spirit 
Sushmana Pravah is an event in which our consciousness flows through the Sushmana and attains the connection with the other consciousness. It is only then we experience something called the consciousness. If the secret door is closed, how hard we try to chant the name of the Lord. You know, we'll, we'll come to know what, what Bhagavan Krishna has said to Arjuna about it. But prior to that, let's understand about the doors which we are trying to understand. The secret tenth door, if after you open it, then comes the secret eleventh door which is called Ekadash Dwar. We know only about the nine doors. There are very rare few who know about the tenth door. But who have the knowledge about the Ekadash Dwar? Only a true Brahma Gyani. I can guarantee that there would be very rare sant who would have even a little impression about what this divine eleventh door is? Because only a true Brahma Jnani, only a Jnani who is not a Jnani because he, he or she is the scholar of the scriptures, but he is Jnani because he or she has experienced and become Brahma Rishi, experienced the Brahma, would know what is the significance of this eleventh door which is called Prakash Dwar, which is the door through which the Sumiran happens, the, the complete Sumiran happens, where the soul directly connects to the Almighty. If this secret eleventh door is not made visible and available to the practitioner by Sadguru, even after we open the door to the divine, the tenth door, yet you will be just roaming in the conscious space of the actual Brahm and not finding the Almighty in that space. The bliss will still not be there. You will be floating in the space of consciousness of Akshar Brahm, which will be all over places. You will experience about Akshar Brahm, but yet the experience of the Almighty will not be possible without knowing about this divine Ekadash Dwar, the eleventh door. And this is what is the glory of Sadhguru. Think about where lies all the different 84 lakhs of incarnations. They all lie within the Prakriti and the space of consciousness which the Akshar Brahm is, is beyond the tenth door. And the Almighty is beyond the eleventh door. When we speak about the tenth door and eleventh door, what it simply signifies is the refinement of your consciousness. Almighty is everywhere. Akshar Brahm is everywhere in this creation. Almighty is also everywhere in this creation and Almighty is beyond this creation also. Akshar Brahm is where this zone of creation is. But beyond the zone of Akshar Brahm is the Almighty, who is also within the Akshar Brahm. So in this creation, there are two omnipresent entities. There are two entities which are to be known by the soul. One is called Madhyam Purush, which is Akshar Brahm. Who is the reason for this creation to happen? Who is the basis by which the Almighty creates this universe? It is by the Akshar Brahm energy. Who lies between the 10th and the 11th door? 
meaning when our consciousness is refined to a level that it is able to cross the tenth door in that refined state of consciousness the akshar brahm becomes visible it comes into experience and we find akshar brahm all over places but the refinement of consciousness has not reached the level that the almighty become visible to you that happens when the practice continues further for the further refinement of consciousness for the further refinement of surati the surati which is nothing nothing but your rays of consciousness when that surati refines further into nirati which is the finest form of your consciousness it is that nirati which is able to cross through the door of ekadash dwar and when it succeeds crossing that door that is the sign that you have attained that level of refinement of your consciousness that now the almighty also will be visible to you all over places so most subtle entity in this creation is the almighty almighty is everywhere there is no place where almighty has to come because almighty is already there so almighty does not go and come anywhere because he is already there what we need to do is refine our consciousness to that level that omnipresent almighty become visible to us so the process of refinement is by practicing the flow of consciousness through these doors because only when your consciousness is refined enough to cross that door you reach to that level of subtleness where these entities become visible to you the madhyam purush first and the uttam purush meaning almighty the next so it is very important to have clear understanding about these door the 10th door and the 11th door to clarify further the 11th door in the space of consciousness of akshar brahm is hidden just like the 10th door is hidden in this body so is the 11th door hidden in the consciousness of akshar brahm and who makes it evident to the seeker it is the sadguru by all these we understand what is the glory of sadguru why it is important for us to devote to sadguru because only sadguru has the reach to those doors all of the species the soul who is in different yonis will remain within the prakriti within the zone of creation but we are talking about entities which are beyond the perception of our indriyas so we need sadguru before i move forward to next slide i would like to open this forum for discussion please uh, feel free to comment uh, reflect your understanding and then we'll uh, build upon that anybody has any question around it you want me to repeat anything please feel free to speak up namaste vijay kumar ji narayan here yes narayan ji yeah Sushumna Nadi, I think we talked about it yesterday evening as well. Uh, wanted to understand. So I understand it goes all the way until Brahmarandra. But right. where does it start? Is it starting with Muladhara or is it Anahatar? If you're 
if your source of understanding is the internet then internet will uh, tell you different stories but if your source of understanding is the scriptures which are written by the sadguru not by the mental exercise not by references but by experience then you will find this description that there are 101 nadis that flows from uh, the heart to the entire body 100 nadis goes down only one nadi goes up from the heart that is called sushmana okay so this sushmana nadi starts from the heart and goes maybe it will be not just straight to the up maybe it will be going down and up but it starts from the heart and goes to the top of the head thank you yeah i heard both from uh, waking up yoga only that's what i was a little confused like what is the right thing am i hearing something wrong so usually i heard from heart to the top but then yesterday we heard like it is a uh, starts at molazara maybe i might have overheard it thank you for correcting sir no thank you for bringing that forward we'll clarify it yeah thank uh, you vijay kumar ji it's sanjana here um i want to know is nirati the final form of consciousness uh is uh, nirati you saying is nirati the final form of consciousness yeah the nirati is the finest among the soul and the surati and the nirati soul is also the consciousness surati is the rays of consciousness and the nirati is the finest rays of consciousness that emits from the soul okay. so for the soul nirati is the finest but the finest form of consciousness is the almighty because there are four consciousness four types of consciousness one is the consciousness of the soul the next one is the consciousness of the akshar brahm the next one is the consciousness of sadguru and the final one is the consciousness of almighty so there are four conscious entities and in the order of in the order of subtleness if you see then the finest among these four consciousness is the consciousness of almighty the grossest the grossest is the consciousness of the soul but the finest is the consciousness of the almighty and that is why almighty's consciousness is permeating through even the soul even the soul is gross in front of the consciousness of almighty that's why the consciousness of almighty permeates through everything it passes through everything he is everywhere not only in the prakriti but also in in within the soul yeah. he's everywhere thank you vijay ji um vijay ji this is jyoti um, yeah. I have a, I mean, uh, I have a question in the sense that uh, uh, speaker, I think there was a speaker, I think two, three weeks back or even a month back. And mm -hmm. he was, uh, he, he, you know, it was said that uh, Sadhguru Ji asked him that what door, what level you want to be at, you know, mm -hmm. and then yeah. he, yeah, and he opened he took him to uh, another level straight you know instead of going like one two three like that so mm -hmm. my question the question that i have is like you know how you are explaining all the doors right the secret door and everything uh guruji apni patrata like you know looking at uh, you know if you're good or not and all that right. like that he can guide us to that door straight or uh, yes yeah. uh, no absolutely that is correct because that is the only way uh, that works our patrata that is the only thing that works in fact all these practices of sadhana seva and satsang 
the three pillars in vihangam yoga is only to build patrata pal me alak lakhave santo soi sadguru kahave for sadguru it is a moment job but but what is more for us is to become eligible right right And that's why it says kumbhak bandhana eko lage ape aap kundali jage when the sadguru energy flows then there is no need of any kumbhak and bandh kriya the kundalini leaves the way automatically just in a moment kumbhak bandhana eko lage ape aap kundali jage the kundalini awakening happens just automatically when that energy is showered from top to bottom so here we don't we don't force with breath to open the door but there is an energy of sadguru that works opens our door and mm. then we leave the way okay. thank you hello vijay ji yeah yeah ranjini here once a door is open does it remain open or uh, it closes like after some time see it totally depends on our uh, level of uh, purity you know kabir sahib said in one of the bhajan he said bahut tak chadhi 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 ke fir aaye birla jan thahrana चलो जहा बसत पुरुष निर्वाण तो इट सेज दैट दे आर सेवरल योगीज हु अटेन दैट लेवल ऑफ प्योरिटी दैट दे रीचेज इवन टू द इलेवेंथ डोर इवन आफ्टर टेंथ डोर वेन द रीचेज टू द इलेवेंथ डोर देन द फाइनल थिंग द अहंकार द अहंकार द अल्टीमेट इग्नोरेंस that grips in and then they fall again so devotion how much devotion we develop for sadguru that is very essential that is why devotion is practiced for sadguru sadguru is only the basis through which he wants us to develop a devotion quality because only with that devotion quality he will be able to raise ourselves and establish permanently in union with almighty so based on what is our level of devotion how pure we have become sadguru can apply his force and take you there but who will stay there one who have really attained that level of devotion and sense of surrender within themselves so it is it is not like that that once the door is open then uh, you are free from maya no unless the uh, the ultimate destiny of the yoga journey happens which means brahma vidya chinvi udi lagi karma ghar aag karma vasana jar gayi chetan chetan ja what it means is only when the fifth stage of vihangam yoga practice is complete when the union with almighty is attained only at that point the brahma energy flows into our chitta and it burns away all our vasana and attachments of the prakriti so only when the ultimate union with almighty is is attained only then there is no chance for you to fall down prior to that even at the last moment also you have chance to fall down that's why it is said it's it's very fine line the 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 track the track of spiritual journey is very fine if you are even a little bit shaky in your foot in in your walk then you have chances to fall in in the in the drench you know of maya So, so Vijay ji, till the last moment, uh, you mean to say till uh, like after death, or uh, still we will be alive? Like, oh, you will be. Just... 
no 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 this all we are talking about the spiritual journey while living in this life okay so that is what is called jivan mukt samadhi so jivan mukt samadhi is the is the precondition for videh mukt samadhi there are two kinds of samadhi one is called jivan mukt samadhi and one is called videh mukt samadhi jivan mukt samadhi means while living in this life even even when you are let's say 21 years old 22 years old from then on itself you will become mukt right from the age of 21 22 you are already mukt Mean, meaning you are already in union with the almighty and just that you are connecting to almighty with the ashtam surati you know the the soul has eight rays of consciousness where the eighth one is inactive right now only the five five suratis are active with which you are doing the worldly activities the surati the eighth surati the ashtam surati is what converts into nirati and connects to the almighty and then the rest of the surati comes down to the body so that you can perform your daily activities for the rest of the life and your state become a jivan mukt state it is something like the panihari meaning a lady a villager who keeps one matka you know the pot the water pot on the top of the head but she does not hold it in in her hand will be the other water pots and she will be carrying those water pots but one but one part of her consciousness will always remain on the on the water pot on her head so that it does not fall and she will be walking carefully holding the rest of the pot with her hand without letting the water pot fall down from her head this is how a jivan mukt yogi lives they always remain in the experience of almighty with the ashtam surati and with the seven surati they engage in the worldly activities from the plane of the soul now the situation is opposite earlier the mind was driving the life now the soul is driving the life now the mind and the indriyas are completely in control of the soul there is no restlessness in the jivan mukti yogi it is completely in charge of its own life not only in charge of its own life but it can see through everything about the self what is my future when am i going to end this human body because it has complete wisdom being in union with almighty it also knows about its prarabdha it knows about the last breath and accordingly it will just sit in yoga mudra at that moment and leave the body and become videha mukt meaning now all the entire consciousness now leaves the body and unite with almighty leaving the body behind so that is when it attains videha mukt so jivan mukt is while living in the body videh mukti is when is the final salvation where you trans you transport from this land of mortality to the land of immortality okay all right but still we need to have a, like devotion bhakti in our heart uh, throughout the life right because there is a chance like even if the soul meets a god like in the previous uh, lectures you have explained so if it uh, has that ego of a uh, uh, that uh, Brahm, I am Brahm. I am Lord. So then, right. there's a chance that it may fall down again. Yeah, but then um, you know, it is for infinite. It takes infinite years. We are not talking about it's a momentary fluctuation. It's not like that. Okay. No, in in the zone of immortality, even a fraction of time is like a yons, the yugas in this mortal land. so it it's it's for it's forever you in in the in the reference of the time that we understand in this mortal land in that reference it is for the infinite number of years you are in the salvation 
so how the secret door cannot open it cannot open by any outward flow of consciousness you know the 10th door is closed by the kundalini and any practices of devotion which is based on karmic bhakti which is based on karma lead to only outer outward flow of consciousness in fact any connection of consciousness with a materialistic subject meaning the subject which you have gathered with your eyes with your ear any connection of consciousness with those subject even with closed eyes is again the sign of the outer flow of consciousness because when we talk about any materialistic experience whether in close with closed eyes or with open eyes the moment you have any subject which is composed of five basic elements any subject even though the subject is the form of almighty if we are talking about any subject which is perceivable by our indriyas if you connect to that subject it is called karma so we need to be very careful that what subject we need to engage our consciousness into will my this karma lead to the reversal of consciousness eventually or this karma will lead to have only the outward flow of consciousness when does the outward flow of consciousness reverses and convert into inward flow of consciousness it totally depends on where you are flowing your consciousness who you are flowing your consciousness into we need to understand that if we are flowing our consciousness into something which will keep your consciousness always outward then you remain in the cycle of life and death because we remain caught into performing only karma and karma is deposited in your chitta and based on your karma because it's all good karma you are doing all good karma even with this outward flow of consciousness you may continue to get maybe the human birth that too we don't know because you never know for past several births what are the other set of karma that you have been performing only in this life you are so alert so aware that you have started performing good karma but this good karma is just a dust in the ocean of karma that you have already performed so think about it how insignificant would be your one life karma so what is the way out the way out is nothing in our hand the way out is only in the hand of sadguru we need to understand the glory of sadguru what is the what is the fortune when one connects to the sadguru so how the secret door cannot open it cannot open by any outward flow of consciousness whatever be the activities this is where i wanted to bring forth what bhagwan shri krishna said in bhagavad gita he said that uh, nana shastra pathena loka nana dev pujyatam atma gyan bina partha sarva karma nirarthaka he said o kunti san o son of kunti o arjuna how hard one studies the scriptures or how sincerely and you know with devotion worships the deities nana deva pujyatam you worship n number of devas then deities deities but if there is no atma gyan atma gyan bina partha sarva karma nirarthaka 
if all your worship of deities are futile in giving you the atma bodh then all these wave efforts are meaningless oh kunti san arjun how hard one studies the scriptures or how severely worships deities with indriyas if that do not lead to the atma gyan the realization of the conscious conscious being the conscious self all these karma are futile we need to sincerely think about it what yogeshwar yogeshwar sri krishna is telling here so any physical process whether performed in the name of devotion including one in the name of devotion you know does not lead to the freedom from the cycle of life and death i'll tell you a brief story at this point you know in in one family there was a the eldest in the family the father in law who who used to worship for 2 hours 2 and 1/2 hours every day and he used to be fully enjoying his worship because he used to do it with you know full uh, uh devotion of course i mean he had because it had become his habit the day he will not worship he will feel something is missing in the life he had so much of attraction towards performing worship every day a friend of his arrives at the door knocks the door the daughter in law says oh my father is right now selling the horses maybe you need to wait or come later after some time the door knocks again she says uh, oh i'm sorry right now my father is busy counting his money you need to come little later and third time when do the there's a knock on the door this time the father in law who is sitting in the puja room in the worship he could not control himself is at this time i don't i won't let my daughter lie to my friend and he will rush to the door and and open the door and and then tell uh, the daughter in law why you are misguiding my friend and then my daughter then the daughter in law says that forgive me father is it is it not true that when the first time the friend arrives though you were in the worship but your mind was not there your mind was selling the horses second time you were counting the money mala to kar me phire jeev phire mukh mahi manwa to chahu dishi phire yah to sumiran nahi this is not how worship happens and how hard you try to be devotional from your own side only when you have great sanskar when you have been worshiping for thousands of births like that it is only then with the blessing of sadguru again with the invisible force of sadguru only you will feel connected to your worship at least in the andric worship that too it is not going to lead to the atma gyan because atma gyan is a different science but at least with all these effort your antakaran will be pavitra will be pure with all this worship with all this good intentions and with devotion at least the antakaran the mind will be pure the chitta will be pure because your chitta will have all the sanskaras of worship so your chitta will be pure 
the mind will be pure your thoughts will be pure your intellect will be pure and when you attain that level of purity then the fruit of all these andrik bhaktis that sadguru will start guiding you sadguru will start helping you it is only then your worship will take a shape otherwise we will be just wasting the time the way the father in law was wasting his time two hours of worship but mind roaming in the market what is the use of spending two hours of time in the worship so it is very important to understand the preciousness of the human breath are we wasting it is it really taking any shape is my worship progressing where is the beginning of the worship and where is the end of the worship if right from my childhood if my worship is stuck at the same level then i must consider this as a warning sign and do everything possible to please the sadguru because only when the sadguru is pleased with our devotion with our sincerity there is a chance of something to happen otherwise the entire life will go in chanting the mala in your heart, in your hand but your the state of the restlessness of the mind will remain as it is maybe it will improve little bit but we are talking about the five stages of the yoga only it is the first stage in which mind comes to rest so even with lot of effort of andrik bhakti if mind starts coming to little rest you are still just within the first stage of vihangam yoga instead if we directly establish devotion with sadguru sadguru has a power to connect with your consciousness and pull your consciousness and straight away promote it in the next level where the restlessness of the mind automatically diminishes down where the purification of the mind starts happening because you take your mind to that triveni where the sound of om and the light of om brushes the mind and cleans it cleanses it so we need to understand the science of devotion we need to un- understand the science of worship we should not be blindfolded and continue letting the flow outward flow of consciousness happen forever we need to do something to reverse the flow of consciousness we must have heard about balmiki you know it is said that ulta naam japai jag jana balmiki bhagam sama ulta naam what is the if if he can he many people say that balmiki started chanting mara 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 and that's how he was able to become brahma swarup he became brahma rishi he realized almighty though the person who can chant mara 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 can he not chant ram ram what is the hidden message actually in this though the hidden message is simply this ulta naam japai jag jana meaning instead of chanting the name the parthiv name the materialistic name instead of making the flow of consciousness happen outward he reversed the flow of consciousness instead of connecting it to the parthiv form the materialistic form of almighty he connected his consciousness by reversing it to the conscious form he reversed the flow of consciousness ulta he reversed it he reversed the flow of consciousness from outward to inward and then he became god realized that is the message of this ulta naam japai jag jana balmi ki bhay gam sama our guru says that 
see how how the deep darkness is there in the world people say he chanted mara 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 and he became you know the chant of god only is everything but people don't understand what is the process of that chanting of lord is it by the physical mouth no by chanting the lord's name here simply means by being engrossed into the consciousness of almighty and have the constant bliss of almighty ulta naam not by the speech not by outward flow of consciousness but by inward flow of consciousness and this is what we need to do while we are in the human life because this human life is that very precious inch by inch seconds by seconds days by days months by months years by years it is slipping out of our reach once it's gone we cannot go back and hold the time back what is gone is gone so we need to judiciously use our time in the human life we need to understand where is the sadguru entity and where are the rest of the deities we need to invest our time accordingly we need to understand it is the blessings of all the deities all the worship that we have been doing it is the blessings of those deities that we get sadguru after we surrender to sadguru our worship of deities are fulfilled meaning what is the greatest gift of deity worship the greatest gift the greatest boon the greatest blessings of the deity worship is obtaining the shelter of sadguru it is something like promoting from the elementary school to the university after that you don't want to come back to elementary school because everything is fulfilled already there is nothing else left once you attain the shelter of sadguru nothing else left for you to go back one needs to understand why ram and krishna they also sang glory of sadguru he promoted the people to go to the shelter of sadguru and serve the sadguru if you really want to get the atma gyan and parmatma gyan that is the message of all the mahapurush in fact those who read hanuman chalisa or for that matter in any scripture you will find that it all sings the glory of guru which guru which guru if the god only is to be taken as guru then why there is a the term guru think logically those who have no knowledge about the eternal sadguru those who do not know about sadguru they mix the two they think that only when you consider the god as guru then uh, there will be upliftment in spirituality it is opposite only when you consider guru as god then there will be upliftment in spirituality that is something we need to understand i would like to open this forum to maybe not only talk about this but if you want to extend any discussion from what we left in uh, morning session 9:30 session I think uh, Madan yes. ji has some questions. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, Vijay ji. Uh, Sadguru, Jai Sadguru Deo, everyone. Uh, the one question I have is uh, when you mentioned the greatest boon of uh, uh, doing the de deity worship is getting Sadguru. Uh, is there any reference um, in Swarved related to this? Yes. right so i will forward you the reference 
that oh. only um, only with the great fortune you know when for several births you do all these good karma it is then the result is that you get the shelter of Sadhguru. and the good karma meaning all these worshiping deities and all this and it also says that uh, if you get the opportunity of obtaining the shelter of Sadhguru, but you do not recognize the importance of it, then all your breath, all your dan, all your dharma, which you performed in the name of deities, when it came to get the fruit of it, you denied the fruit. So what happened then? It is something like then you, you, you were in a state of broken branch which when falls off the main tree, then after that, if you stick to the same broken branch, it is not going to give you anything further. It wanted to give you the fruit when it was connected, but when it, it wanted to give you the fruit, you denied and, and it fell off the ground. And if you still stick to the same thing, it is not going to give you anything more than that. The greatest boon of all this breath, dan, dharma, and everything is obtaining the shelter of Sadhguru. If you deny that opportunity, then it's like Swami said, it's like Sukha tree, you know, the 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 branch that fell off the tree, and after that it, it does not have power to give any further fruit. It is like dry tree. Amir says, Brahm Vidya ke bodh binu, jap tap puja paat, yaj daan dharm niyam jo, yah sab ukta kaat. Without the Brahm Vidya, all this japa, tapa, and all the worship, everything is just like the dry wood, which is not going to give you any further fruits. If you deny the opportunity of Brahm Vidya, which is available to you in the form of Sadhguru right now. Vijay uh, hello? Yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Abhi Abhi Ji Bataya, like you know, you said, right, that uh, uh, when the fruits are ready to be received, uh, we don't take it because we don't understand it. So oh, that that sense of uh, discrimination, this is right, this is wrong. How does that come into us? Because you know we are there, we are doing all the sadhana and everything, and when then there is a time to get the fruit, we are not able to see it that way. That it is the fruit given by Sadhguru. So um, how we are not able to do that? What is the obstacle like? Right. Very good question. If yes. we have the sadhana, we have reached there, and we are, you know, going to. Yes. Vijay ji, yes. So on the same lines that Jyoti ji is asking the question, I had the same question. How do we realize that uh, we are, you know, we did so much and we got it? Uh, there's another thing that is. Uh, uh, very close to what she asked I, I had I wanted to put it uh, before you answer which is that in some uh, other form of spirituality in India there is a lot of significance given to uh, Nam Jap so because I belong to Punjabi background there are some people in my uh, you know culture that they have uh, also gone and uh, you know they are also under a shel the shelter of some guru and they have got this uh, uh, chanting of some sacred nam when at the time of initiation so when you know and i have heard here also in uh, you know uh, in bihangam yoga that uh, there comes a stage where we we there is some shabd gyan at some stage. So is that the same thing um, that the other 
uh, folks are uh, chanting of that sacred shab that only is given at the time of initiation by their guru. So that yeah, was so, question, which is little different from. Yeah. So first, uh, uh, coming to Jyoti Ji's question. Um, so Jyoti Ji, it is uh, this is where our tapa comes into picture. How sincerely we are not letting the Maya take over us. Are we very sincere in our spiritual upliftment? Are we doing tapa, controlling our senses, controlling our indiyas? Are we doing needful to stay always motivated in devotion with Sadhguru or with our practices? Based on that, our state of sanskar, our state of chitta will automatically reflect in such a fashion that when Sadhguru will come to you, it will be very natural for you to accept. But if our tapa, our sincerity of the seeking of the wisdom is not to that par, is not at par with what is needed to form the state of the chitta such that when Sadhguru is in front of you, you'll be automatically attracted. It will be very natural. When that natural attraction is not happening, that means if there is any confusion, if there is still any calculation going on, that means there is still some level of impurities left. Because it is very natural. It is very natural when the, the iron piece, if there is no dust on it, if there's nothing else that covers the iron piece, if you clean the iron metal completely, and it is just pure iron then, then whether iron desire or it doesn't desire, it doesn't matter. If it is in the magnetic field, if the magnet is in the vicinity of it, it has to get attracted to it because that is what is the nature of it. So when Sadhguru comes close to the pure soul, then there is automatic attraction towards Sadhguru. Nobody can stop it. So all that matters is whether we have really sincerely sought, you know, is our seeking that sincere enough to really obtain the shelter of Sadhguru. So if, that's why it is said, Pahle data shishya bhaya, tan man dara shish, piche data guru bhaya namadiyo bakshish. Though it is in Sadhguru's hand to give everything, but what is in our hand is to give ourselves. Only if we give ourselves, at least that much is in our hand, to give ourselves completely to the Sadhguru, so that Sadhguru can give everything to you. So the first step is still in our hand only. Had it not been in our hand, then by now this earth would have been vacant. If only God can decide and take all the soul whenever he wishes from the mortal land to immortal land or, you know, people think that, you know, we are all sent to this mortal land with a purpose. We are sent by Almighty. This is not the principle of Brahma Vidya. Principle of Brahma Vidya says that you are a free soul. You are a free soul. You are free to do your karma. Guru can only help you and, and get you the karma which is good for you once you surrender to Sadhguru. If you do not surrender to Sadhguru, then you are the, ma the maker of your own karma. But once we surrender to Sadhguru, though the worldly life is a karma driven, but then the karma also will be brought to you by the Guru. 
and you will involve yourself into those karma which is beneficial for you that is how then the sadguru becomes the controller of your life otherwise we are the controller of our own life and when we are the controller of our own life we still continue to gather the dust on the pure iron and when the dust is there the confusion is there and the confusion is there the dilemma is there whether to come to the feet of sadguru or not the question is there the doubt is there all we need is to just end ourselves all we need is to think that i have no capacity to even recognize who the sadguru is i have no capacity and truly a human being has no capacity to recognize who the true sadguru is the reason is the difference between sadguru and a normal guru is in the parameter which is beyond the perception of our indriyas so how can we find the difference between sadguru and guru the only way we can find the difference is to by purifying ourselves because when you pu purify ourselves then automatically you will come to a stage when your soul will recognize the sadguru by experiencing a an invisible pull from the sadguru as if the sadguru will start pulling you you will know that this is sadguru i want to for some reason i want to devote myself to this guru he feels like my own guru so only sadguru adopts the soul soul cannot find who the true sadguru is that's why it is said hai sameep dikhe nahi vah dekhe sab ko the guru will be nearby but you cannot see him you will not recognize that this there lies the true sadguru power within this form you will not recognize hai sameep dikhe nahi vah dekhe sab ko jara mrityu nahi tahi tahi mein kah pandit va ko so only sadguru chooses his disciple we don't choose sadguru only sadguru chooses disciple so all that matters is we need to work upon the purity of our inner core once we are pure enough then no matter how or where you are sadguru will find a way to connect you adopt you that is the glory of sadguru now coming to uh, monika ji yeah so monika ji can you repeat your question yes um so because you were mentioning about uh, deity worship you know um this uh, yeah. just this question okay. came arose uh, in my yeah. mind that um there is a deity worship we all know and also um there is um some yeah. form of uh, spirituality that uh, you know um, i can't remember the institute's name um uh, in this um, in I, I india some of yeah yeah i got to question no need to name take any name but uh, let, let me just clarify it here so when we say shabd when we say shabd shabd is spoken for the consciousness okay shabd here does not mean the the chant the words that we speak out of our mouth here the shabd means the consciousness when we say shabd for example our swami ji wrote a book called uh, a book of bhajan he named it as shabd prakash he named it as shabd prakash why did he name it as shabd prakash because uh, you know in uh, in true sense you cannot isolate the light and the sound where there is light there is sound 
where there is sound there is light and that is why the almighty is also called sar shabd he is called sar shabd meaning who is the root sound of all the sound who is within all the sound who is shabd swarup he is called shabd swarup and at the same time he is also called param prakash so whether you look at the dimension of the sound or you look at the dimension with the dimension of light you are talking about the same entity because the light and sound coexist in fact sound is in the origin and the light is of the sound and so it is said in the beginning there was nothing but only shabd meaning only almighty's almighty energy and then with his energy the energy of akshar brahm spawns and with the vibratory energy of akshar brahm then the parmanus which were in equilibrium the sat raj tam the trigunas of the prakriti start combining to each other and start forming the basic elements first the akash is formed then comes the vayu then comes the agni then jal then prithvi in sequence these fundamental elements are formed with the combination of different combination of satogun rajogun and tamogun and then with the different combination of these five basic fundamental elements different creation starts coming into picture so when we say shabd shabd here is not the chant that we produce but shabd is you know a term for the conscious element only so because anything which has a conscious light he has a form of the shabd so there is a light and there is shabd both coexist that is what is the consciousness so when we say naam naam also is a word for the almighty kabir sahib in all his vanis he had used naam and wherever he used ram he used ram with the sense not with the sense of dashrath putra ram but with the sense of supreme almighty who is all pervaded through everything ram jo sab mein rama hua hai wah ram the ram who is omnipresent in everything he is the ram so in kabir vani whatever wherever the you will find two words naam and ram and in majority of the places he used the word ra uh, we use the word naam and naam is the just because the almighty does not have any other name so the naam itself has been you know spoken by the saints to indicate the almighty naam bhakti karo naam bhakti meaning not the physical name of of this or that but naam bhakti means simply the devotion of the almighty who is known by the word naam so there is no chanting involved when we say naam jap naam japa means what one is the chanting which we produce with our mouth and then there is chanting which is already happening that's called ajapa and then there is a stage when we experience the almighty the experience of almighty is called naam jap meaning you are in the shabd prakash of almighty that is what is the naam jap but just because of the 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 mental and the intellectual gymnastics people have 
derive the meaning of all these on the basis of what they understand at the intellectual level and the different sects, different practices started coming into picture. But in reality, the Brahma Rishi in the ancient time itself have spoken about it. They said, Yato Vacho Nivartante Ah Prapya Manasasa. Meaning, where the speech and the mind together returns from without attaining the experience of Almighty. Where the speech cannot reach, the mind cannot reach, the Almighty exists in that very subtle zone. Where there is no reach of speech, no reach of mind. How hard you chant the name of the Almighty, it is something like our Guru says, if you say bhojan, 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 by you saying bhojan, 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 bhojan is in front of you and you are just saying bhojan, 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 bhojan. Unless you follow the process to take the bhojan into your mouth, chanting bhojan, bhojan is not going to get you anything. Similarly, in the process of uh, devotion also, Chanting name is only for the purification of the inner core. But once you are purified, when the God is served to you, it is something like that. Bhojan, bhojan, bhojan. This word is only to indicate somebody who can serve you the food. But once the food is served to you, will you still continue to say bhojan, 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 bhojan? Or when the bhojan, when you're ready, when you're eligible to get the food and it's served to you, now is the time to exercise how to get the food, how to test the food. So the Naam chanting is only a preparation for purifying your inner core. Once you're pure, then Sadhguru will be served to you. When Sadhguru is served to you, then is the time to devote to him so that he can serve the Almighty to you. This is how the entire ladder that you go through. But unfortunately, when we don't understand this process, we continue to say bhojan, 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 bhojan and remain hungry forever. That is the problem. So now because we have uh, limited time, I'll just complete this. Um, so what is the way out if we if we have no reach to the consciousness, we have no reach to the 11th door. That is why it is said, Aage dwara band hai, bhakti bhed bahu bhed, bin sad guru ki bhakti ke, prabhu ki bhakti na You know, there is a realm of prakriti and us sima tak man uske niche pahunch jata hai. So your mind can take you up to that door, but it cannot take you beyond. Guru Gamya Sadhan Dwara Aage Marg Khulta Hai. Or Vishesh Guru Kripa Hone Par Vishesh Prakash Dwar Ki Prabhti Hoti Hai. Is liye Sadguru Bhakti Se Hi Prabhu Ki Bhakti Hoti Hai. Bina Sadguru Ke Aage Ka Band Marg Nahi Khulta. Sadguru Hi Is Anubhav Gamya Marg Ka Pradarshan Karte Hai. और इन्हीं के प्रकाश में आत्मा उस चेतन प्रकाश को प्राप्त कर कृत कृत्य होता है। So all our practices on the basis of mind and speech, everything can only take you below the door, but not beyond the door. After that, you need the knowledge of the guru, the blessings of the guru to open the door. And with his great blessings only, you then eventually go even beyond and reach to the 11th door called Prakash Dwar. And when that is attained, when you cross that door with again with the devotion of Sadhguru, only when you devote yourself to Sadhguru, Sadhguru will make you cross that door. You cannot cross the door without the force of Sadhguru. So you have to rely on Sadhguru for crossing that door. So you have to. 
be fully devoted to Sadhguru to be able to cross that door. If there is any doubt on Sadhguru, then Sadhguru will hide his energy. He cannot apply his energy to somebody who is doubtful, who is still with dirts, who is not pure. And that is why Sadhguru devotion is the process to open the door after which the devotion of Almighty happens. So without Sadhguru devotion, the door to the divinity is closed. And unless that opens, the real Chetan Bhakti does not begin. It is Sadhguru who shows that path, you know, that Vihangam path, meaning the passage through which the Surati converts into Nirati and attain the refined state where the union with Almighty is established. That path is called Vihangam path. Vihangam path is the path that passes through the 11th door. That Vihangam path is shown by the Sadhguru. How does he show? He shows with his own light, with his own energy. And in only in Sadhguru energy, we are able to see through that particular door and refine further to attain the, the supreme light of Almighty. So Sadhguru is the interface for us to reach the Almighty. There is no other interface, only Sadhguru. That is why it is said that Sadhguru is not a human body that you see. Even after this human body cease to exist, even when the Vyakta form will cease to exist, that eternal Sadhguru exists in his own form. And when we're talking about the Sadhguru guiding in the Vihangam path, we are talking about that eternal Sadhguru energy, which has taken a human form in the form of the Vyakta Sadhguru right now. Whoever form he adopts, and passes on his energy into that Vyakta form becomes the Vyakta form of Sadhguru. Aj Guru ki chaya pade Sadhguru padadikar. Only when the eternal Sadhguru adopts a saint, a Brahmarishi, you know, there are lakhs of Jivan Mukti Yogi. Out of that, only rare few are one who are eligible for becoming Sadhguru. And then one out of them are chosen by the eternal Sadhguru and then flows his energy into that Brahmarishi to make him the Vyakta form of Sadhguru. So the Sadhguru in the Vyakta form, in the, in the human form, is the one who is chosen by the eternal Sadhguru. So that we ignorant being can connect to the Sadhguru in the human form. So all we need is arat dina adhinata satya hinsa bhav upyogi yah bhakti ke sadguru charana samav. Arat dina adhin satya hinsa avam sadguru charano me shuddha prem. Ye bhakti ke upyogi gun hai. Jin ke dwara jivan adhyatma path me aage badhata hai. Aur lakshya ki prapti ke liye prayatna karta hai. So any effort by body and mind can only keep me in Prakriti. Sadhguru energy is required for reversal of consciousness and for opening 10th door. Sadhguru alone can show the 11th door in the space of consciousness, which eventually will lead you to experience the Almighty. So no one but Sadhguru alone can open the 10th door and 11th door. Hence surrender and pray at the holy feet of Sadhguru Dev. Sooner we realize this, better it is for our spiritual growth. So the conclusion is, human breath is precious. Use the human breath judicially to establish love and devotion for Sadhguru Dev. Only with Sadhguru's devotion, the devotion of Almighty is revealed. What should I do next? Just don't waste your time. Seva is something we need to adopt for developing true love and devotion. Sadhana is something we need to do for raising consciousness. 
satsang is what we need to continue for staying pure and righteous seva sadhana and satsang should be the basis of our life for a continued growth in spirituality our guru says seva sadguru hari bhajan aru sat sang vichar yah sanyam nit ki jiye teen saar sansar this should be the essence of our life the seva sadhana and satsang thank you so much with this we conclude i'm sorry we went about 6 minutes past our time so i'll uh, park all all your questions for the next session we'll conclude with the shanti part isha ji thank you vijay ji shanti part he prabhu shanti swarup ho shanti shanti mai shanti शांति शांति जन शांति हो पूर्ण शांति मै शांति हे प्रभु शांति प्रदान कर दूर हो सर्व शांति देव सदा पल शांति मै शांति शांति सुख शांति बोले सदगुरु देव की जय बैक टू विजय जी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ऑफरिंग द प्रेयर फॉर पीस विल मीट अगेन नेक्स्ट वीक थ्री पी एम फॉर डीप डाइव सेशन Prior to that, we have 9:30 session every Saturday in Hindi, 9:30 session every Sunday in English. I request all of you to keep joining those session as well. Thank you so much. Jai Sri Guru Dev. Jai Sri Guru Dev.